What is happening out there, Roto Scouts baseball fans? Good morning. Starting before noon today, 11 o'clock on the nose. Well, 11.01, close enough. Good enough for government work. 105 afternoon start time. 11 games between 1 o'clock and I think 4 o'clock on the slate. 11 gamer on both sites. We've got uh, 105 start. And the last game starting up at 4.10 out in Seattle. Not a bad looking slate. A lot of pitching. Some excellent, excellent prime spots for hitting. Should be a good one. Looking forward to breaking this down. We're going to hustle through this one. I want to get us out of here 12, 12, 15, somewhere around there. So we really don't have time to screw around. I'm going to have to try and keep up with lineups. Uh, but I'm just going to dive on in. Cujo, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Hope you're having a good morning, too. Stephen B., good to see you. Good to see everybody who's out there. I will try and uh, give you a quick shout-outs and say hi as uh, as you pop up in the chat as we go. Uh, but we got to get down to business today because we have a lot to go through. Not a ton of time. I haven't done my, you know, I had no time to write the article this morning. So, you know, we're kind of doing analysis on the fly a little bit. I don't have like the game by game specifics of what each of the pitchers is done like I normally would, but we're going to get through. Woody, what's going on, buddy? Sideways eyes to you too, pal. Cujo's doing well. Always good to hear. Anybody do anything last night uh, results wise? It was another rough one for me. I only played a handful of lineups, but uh, didn't get where I needed to be. Thought we were all over it. On a lot of the different things, just didn't come together, didn't have the right pieces, but uh, hopefully somebody out there did well. We'll start, as usual, with the Vegas board. I can take that away. I had to flag that one. That Padres Brewers line was not available for a while. Oops. I think I just turned it red by accident. Eh, that's cool. All right. Twins and the O's off the top. Seven and a half run total. Pretty even up game there. 3.75 implied total for the Twins. Orioles at 3.93. Twins drawing a ton of power in the home run mark in the home run model though against uh, Bruce Zimmerman. Multiple N's and M's in that guy's name. Texas Rangers at the Detroit Tigers. Good pitching matchup there. 126 total. Uh, 126 to uh, one uh, minus 136 favorites for Detroit with Tariq Skubal on the mound. 3.51 implied total for the Rangers. 4.06 for the favored Tigers. Padres at the Brewers. Interesting one there. Uh, Brewers slightly favored at home, 4.59 total for the Padres, 4.64 for the Brewers. Kind of a high total for a matchup between Peralta and uh, Michael King. I've, I was I had to estimate that one. That's the one I had flagged a minute ago, and the line wasn't up, and I estimated it with a lower run total than nine. Uh, kind of surprised at where that one was. I'll double check it in a minute, but uh, that's what that's what popped up uh, when they when they reset the line. Pirates at the Mets, eight and a half runs there, 126 minus 136, 3.98 total for the Pirates. Solid little 4.61 for the Mets. Disappointed in the Mets last night. Jared Jones, obviously for real. We talked about how good he is, how good the stuff is, what the high strikeouts look like. He projected really well for us today, but we were seeing a little bit of power because of the home runs he had given up in the small sample. Uh, that part didn't really come through for the Mets. Jones went out and pitched a gem. Came out of the game fairly early, though. I think we're going to see that with him a fair amount of the time. Uh, they're really going to just protect that arm. They know they're not contenders this year, so it's a development year. They love to have a kid like that, obviously. We'll probably see Paul Skeens later in the year, but they're going to short start those kids a little bit. So it'll be problematic, uh, especially as those prices climb. Um, but a great, you know, obviously the kid has is, uh, is got dominant, dominant stuff. Kansas City Royals at Chicago uh, White Sox, a redux of yesterday's game that we talked about with uh, Brady Singer and Jonathan Cannon on the mound. Royals, massive favorite, 4.95 implied total, 3.65 on the other side for Chicago. Supposed to be a beautiful day out there with the wind blowing out, should help the offense a little bit. Uh, Braves and the Astros, 4.88 for the Braves, 4.21 for the Astros, nine run total there. Braves slightly favored. Yankees and the Blue Jays, eight and a half on, on board. Uh, even up game, 4.30 on either side. Nats and the Dodgers. Dodgers heavy, heavy favorites again. 5.86 implied total for them to a 3.77 for the Nats. Cardinals in the A's, 4.41 for the Cards, 3.69 for the A's. Cubbies and the Diamondbacks, fairly close game there as well. 4.44 for the Cubbies, 4.66 for the Diamondbacks, we saw that game go off. Uh, pretty sure on FanDuel, a game stack of that uh, Cubbies-Diamondbacks game won the day yesterday. We were looking at that one, both those teams over five runs. Like that spot for offense yesterday. I think we can go right back there. 
It's uh, I, I think a lot of uh, Brandon Fat, the uh, the pitcher for the Diamondbacks, and we'll talk about him in a sec. But been a little bumpy for him so far. Reds and the Mariners. Let me mute the phone here. Love Bryce Miller on the mound for the M's. Think Andrew Abbott could succeed for the Reds. Kind of a low total at seven and a half. Both teams, obviously, tons of strikeouts like we uh, looked at yesterday, like we saw a little bit of. 3.58 implied total for the Reds, 4.01 for the Mariners. Jump to the pitching board. Let me resort it by DK. So a lot of uh, same, same looking guys kind of at the top from like basically singer up three points of, uh, of separation there. And then you've got a little bit of a gap between these guys and then like you know, a couple 27s on the FanDuel scale, 13s and 14s up to the 15. It's a little bit closer of a uh, of a gap, a little bit smaller of a gap on the DraftKings slate. We've got several really, really good options. Both of the pitchers in the Seattle-Cincinnati game. Ace caliber Freddy Peralta. Pablo Lopez going against a tough Orioles team, but he comes in at very cheap prices for a guy who had 200-plus strikeouts, was like fifth in the league in strikeouts last year. Tough matchup for Skubal. Projects fairly well, but he's very expensive against the Rangers. Again, really like Bryce Miller here. Um, wish the, the price was a little bit lower, but I'm happy to pay it, and he's technically the fourth most expensive pitcher on the FanDuel slate. Just a lot of high-priced pitchers on, on the slate today. Abbott is definitely interesting at these cheap prices. Severino, I, I think, could find some success here. He's very cheap, especially at D, on the DK board at 73. I think he's in that SP2 mix. Michael King, kind of the same token. He's very cheap for his upside on the DraftKings slate. Um, fairly affordable on FanDuel as well. Brady Singer, we talked about him yesterday at these high, high prices. I like the projection. I like him to blow through that White Sox lineup. They're, it's a bad, bad lineup. Um, it's just 10-5 is an uncomfortable price to pay, and it becomes more uncomfortable on a slate like this where we've got so many good options, comparable prices, but a bunch of guys at lower prices too. Struggling Kevin Gaussman. Didn't come out of the model projecting well. I didn't put my thumb on the scale. I am concerned. We saw the velo come back a little bit last time. Um, but it was a another messy start for Gaussman the last time he was out there. So his price is down to 7,600. Um, that makes him playable even with the struggles on the FanDuel slate. At 9,000, I, I got some concerns on DraftKings. Could absolutely come out, find his form, and totally succeed. Uh, but these Yankees crushed him just, uh, what, 10 days ago? So a lot of concerns about Gaussman. It's reduced by the price on FanDuel, but the 9K on DraftKings is challenging. Steven Matz could definitely succeed against Oakland in this spot. 73-67, pretty cheap. Stroman is who he is, kind of a spot, I guess. A little bit expensive, probably, for his uh, for his true ceiling. Not a lot of strikeouts most days from Marcus Stroman. He spikes a big strikeout game every now and then. Uh, keeps the ball on the ground very effectively. Keeps the ball in the park very effectively. A good overall pitcher but generally a better major league pitcher than a DFS pitcher. When his prices are up like this, I don't totally love it. Max Freed, like the pitcher, don't like the spot that much against Houston. Dane Dunning, don't love it, um, especially at 93 on FanDuel. Seems like a misprice against an improved Tigers team. 7,100 on DraftKings, I think Dunning makes sense. Just as a value bin uh, kind of a guy. This one's tough just with the form that he's been in. And then, uh, you know, that looking like a spot for offense again. But I could definitely see a path for uh, Brandon Fats to succeed at 77 and 75. He is in the value bin for sure. Kid was excellent down the stretch and through the playoffs last year. Paul Blackburn, Landon Knack, Bailey Falter, Jordan Wicks, J.P. France, Bruce Zimmerman, Jonathan Cannon, and Jake Irvin. These are the names we don't really need that much of. Um, with several very good pitchers or Steven Matz against the, Ori uh, against the Athletics type pitchers. Michael King at 7,000 against the Brewers. Um, I don't know that we need to go to these like super, super bargain bin guys. We've seen a little success every now and again from Falter over time at 5,000. Maybe he's the guy. JP France against Atlanta at 54 I don't really like. Zimmerman, like I said, he's not on the FanDuel slate uh, for whatever reason. But like I said, don't really like his upside, even though the Twins total is low, drawing a ton of power against him. Just a lot of, a lot of meh down toward the bottom here. I can see Blackburn succeeding. At 76, he's in play on DraftKings. He's 9,800 against the Cardinals on FanDuel. Another one that just feels like a misprice. Get into some of this. Ducking, good morning, buddy. No Peralta for Milwaukee? What happened? Wait, when did that happen? 
Oh, shit. All right. We got that changed real quick. Or it's going to take him. And it's uh, Bryce Wilson now from Milwaukee. Thank you. I guess that's why that line changed. I did not catch that. All right. Um, up, 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 up. We need to go like this. Glad you pointed that out, Dev. All right, so uh, let me grab the new picture then. So it's, uh, what did I say? Bryce Wilson? Uh, maybe they just put it on the leaderboard here for me. Nope. All right, hang out. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'm going to have to uh, take a sec to get this updated on the site, too. Okay, good. It is in there. So I can just go like that. Seventeen. It looks okay. And fuck it. Not, uh... Still got to figure out where that catch is and why it's not working, but let's give him some starts. And that should take care of that DraftKings issue. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, so now... I need... Not the delay we needed. <laughs> but an important one. What am I doing? A little snapshot of how the projection table is made. Usually it's a little bit more copy-pasting the entire column instead of one guy at a time. Oops. It's always fun with these guys who are uh, only on one site. Just screws everything up. Let me just reload this to the website, and we'll continue on. So that explains the run total. That explains the delay and the reset in that uh, in that projection. Explains a lot. Twenty-three rows. Twenty-three rows. We're updated there. All right. And there. All right. Okay. Thanks again, Dev. Appreciate that call out. I'll just call that 11 o'clock on the nose. And it's updated. All right. Let's keep on rolling. Actually, go to the first game here. Okay, so we can see a ton of power. <laughs> yeah, naturally, we're getting picture changes on the large early slate. Yep, exactly. There'll probably be something else screwy that comes through. Uh, the Twins, uh, one thing you'll notice Trevor Larnock not on the FanDuel slate for whatever reason. Uh, 2,600 on the DraftKings slate inserted into the lineup today. Um, otherwise fairly straightforward version of the twins lineup. I have Ryan Jeffers as the overall home run pick of the day, just for reasons, just look kind of, uh, compelling there in the two spot in the lineup. You can see very large home run totals for those guys on the twin side of things going up against Bruce Zimmerman, Zimmerman making his debut for the season last year, 23% strikeouts. That's only in 13 and a third, 73 and two thirds, two years ago. 5.99 ERA, a 4.42 XFIT with a 15% strikeout rate. Uh, pretty good 3.8% walk rate. 
but 6.56% home runs, 13.2% barrel allowed, 91.1 on the exit below allowed. Uh, that continued in the tiny sample when he pitched last year, so definitely think we can uh, we can target that. Yeah, we, we just got it. We, ju we just cleaned that up. Appreciate it. So I think we're targeting Bruce Zimmerman with some Twins bats. I really like how cheap the Twins are. Those are ridiculously low prices for this matchup for some of these hitters. Byron Buxton at 2500 against this pitcher. I will absolutely pay that price. Yeah, he's at 208, 246, 321 this year with a 62 WRC plus and no home runs. I get it. He's showing a 17.1, and he's a tremendous talent when he's actually healthy and in the lineup. I'm just happy to go to it against this pitcher uh, at that price. 42 on DraftKings. It's very similar site to site with the cheap pricing. Edward Ulian, I like out of the top spot. He's got four home runs, a stolen base on the year. He's creating runs 13% better than average despite a 283 on base and a 189 average. That's pretty impressive over 60 plate appearances. Jeffers has three home runs already this season, a 271 ISO. Again, uh, he's my home run pick of the day. I had Buxton for the team pick. I like Julian for power at the top. I like Kirilov's number at 9997. Nine, nine, These two guys as well, Jose Miranda and Trevor Larnock. Miranda, first and third base eligible for dead minimum price on the FanDuel slate. Very interesting there. 286, 348, 429 uh, with a 131 WRC plus, a home run, a steal over his 23 plate appearances so far this year. Last year in 152, a little bit weak, three home runs. Year before that, though, 15 home runs, 268, 325, 426 with a 117 over 483 plate appearances. He was a pretty good player that year. So getting Miranda there, hitting fifth at the dead min at the corners, I'm a, I'll take him at the corners um, given that price and, and his upside. Not having Larnock on FanDuel sucks. You can get him on DraftKings. A little bit of barrel last year. Those were, what, eight home runs in 212? Is that him? Am I on the right line there? Yeah, eight home runs in 212 plate appearances last year. 202 ISO year before that, just five in 180. Um, but believable power, believable upside. Premium contact was on display uh, in a big way over those couple hundred plate appearances. Austin Martin, Willie Castro, and Kyle Farmer. Um, I like Castro and Farmer at the bottom of the lineup for their triple position eligibility for very, very cheap prices. The stolen base skills that you get of, out of uh, Castro, the mid-range power, and a little bit of speed that you get out of Farmer. That said, neither one of them has been at all good so far this year. This Twins team is not necessarily all that good, but I'm going to target the pitcher. I'm going to target some of this power upside, and I'm going to take these cheap prices and, uh, and try and run with it as a twin stack. With the Orioles side, and all of that is to also say don't play Bruce Zimmerman. Uh, even at 6000 I don't really see a path to success. He could definitely, for that price, find some strikeouts against this heavy, heavy strikeout Twins team. I think that the odds are with uh, what the model is seeing in getting some power against here. So I think we could target the pitcher. On the twin side, I think Pablo's definitely in play. I know he's been rough. 4.86 ERA is a little bit difficult, but a 3.57 xFIP under that more honest number. 23.2% strikeout rate is down so far in a small sample in three starts, 16 and two thirds. It was 29.2 in his huge year last year. One of uh, a handful of guys that struck out more than 200 uh, batters last year. Stuff plus number is still above average for the short sample, so the stuff is still okay it's still there it's still working it's probably around this number for the full season last year maybe a little higher still inducing swinging strikes which is great to see with the dip in strikeouts little happenstance i think in the small sample so i think Pablo is going to be fine overall 30.2 percent csw 14.5 percent swinging a little bit of incidental premium contact allowed i think we're okay it's just a decision point on do you want to target this Orioles lineup that is very good, very frisky, has some very good left-handed hitters in it, um, and runs nine men deep, technically like 15 men deep, um, if you count the guys on the bench that are all so good. Just an abundance of riches for the Orioles right now. Seriously? Another pitcher change? Is he opening? Yep, it is now Albert Suarez. Awesome. <laughs> uh, is it this Albert Suarez? I think it is this Albert Suarez. All right, let me make sure he's not just opening. Uh, 
Robert Suarez, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> He's got a 5.87 ERA in uh, three games with AAA Norfolk. Uh, hasn't pitched in the show since 2017. He's like 30 something. He's been over in the KBO, it looks like. Uh, all right, so I should be able to get him off of what I had before, too, then, if they've updated. Let's see. Why the fuck would he be there, but not... Fun show so far. Highly valuable. Why isn't he coming up? All right, so again, uh, dude hasn't pitched in the show since uh, 2017. Oh, that's why he wouldn't come up, because I've got this set to... <laughs> He's outside the window for... Uh for when this looks at. Yeah, there he is. All right. All right, another quick pitching change. Um, just assuming price, even at uh, 4000 I can't imagine playing this guy. And of course, he's not on the FanDuel slate. <sighs> okay. So you can see that the Twins' uh, power numbers came down with that change. I'm not really concerned about it. I'm going to need to update... Multiple things now, though. Fuck. Hang in there, guys. So, twin, Twins numbers came down. Um, if you want to... Alright, so taking a, taking a look at, uh, at Pablo while I try and... I'll try and talk while I uh, update this table again. Um, but looking at Pablo, it's really a decision, as I was about to say, about whether or not you want to uh, use Pablo to target that very, very good Orioles lineup. Um, and I don't know that that's the best decision with the current form that we've got on Pablo. It's just that he's so cheap that I don't think it's problematic if you want to do it. It's just kind of one of those, uh, binary, do I want to, do I not want to? He projects just fine. Easy enough for, uh, for him to, to see some success against that squad. But they've got that very good lineup. So, uh, and Suarez is... 4,000 on the DraftKings slate, but not pulling a projection. Why? Why? <sighs> that would be why. I am going to change Justin Armbruster into Albert Suarez for this moment and see what kind of projection he gets eight point three three sounds about right I don't know much about this arm rooster guy but I can't imagine he's that good Yeah, those numbers aren't that far off. If anything, Suarez is a little bit worse than this. But that's not bad. That's that's a reasonable facsimile. Good enough for uh, these purposes, especially because nobody's going to choose this guy. You know, I'm going to just I'm going to make him even worse. I'm 
admin is not starting Baltimore. <sighs> okay. 1126. I guess we're not getting out of here by 12, 12, 15. We'll just take this thing up to lock at this point. Uh, so taking a look at the uh, Orioles lineup, usual suspects for the most part. I like Ryan O'Hearn's uh, little run of quality, just kind of continuing what he started last year. Had there, he's been a player that we knew for quite a while, and we're pretty confident in, uh, you know, he's all right, but he's certainly no star. And uh, last year had a nice breakout. This year over 50 plate appearances, 333, 400, 689, 356 ISO, four home runs. I think he's got home runs on uh, three or four straight days now. So just looking really good from the left side of the plate there. Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson off the top. Gunnar pulling a decent number in the home run model. He's got five on the season already, four stolen bases. Creating runs 59% better than average. Adley at 100, uh, 118 WRC+. Plus. Anthony Santander dipping in terms of the run creation mark, 24% worse than average, but got three home runs. Premium power hitter over time from both sides of the plate. Ryan Mountcastle from the right side, 305, 368, 492, off to a good start, two home runs. Power comes and goes from Mountcastle at times, but uh, a premium bat from the right side. Cedric Mullins, former 30-30 guy, four home runs, three steals, out to a decent start to the year. Triple slash isn't where you'd want it, but a good ISO, good run creation marks. Cedric Mullins is a very talented ball player, and he's only 3,900, 3,100 across sites. Makes him pretty affordable. Colton kowser has been on a tear since uh, basically since the spring training started. Um, 46 plate appearances now, playing every day now. 405, 435, 833 over those 46 plate appearances. Four home runs, two stolen bases, a 429 ISO, creating runs 160% better than average in the small sample. Jordan Westberg, premium prospect. Jackson Holiday, premium prospect. Colton Kowser, same thing. It's ridiculous this lineup top to bottom. I would probably, I, I think I would probably, if I had to, had to, you know, gun to the head kind of a situation, I would think with current form for Pablo, I think I would probably go to the Orioles side of it. I'm probably going to more treat it just as I don't need the bats against a really good pitcher. I don't need to take the pitcher against some good bats. Um, Pablo's very compelling, though, at those at those prices, and the projection is great. Um, it's tough. They made this a really challenging spot. Pablo's a yes for sure. Cross 150 lineups. You definitely want some Pablo in there. Orioles bats are a yes. Twins bats, definitely a yes. Um, and I'm really not even going to reduce the enthusiasm that I had when, they were, when I thought they were facing Zimmerman. Uh, I don't really see much for Albert Suarez, who again hasn't pitched in the show since uh, 2017. In uh, the... Let's see. In AAA this year, over three starts, he completed 15 and a third, 5.87 ERA. A 3.01 XFIP is a little bit better. 26.2% uh, strikeout rate, barely walked anybody at 1.5%. KBO numbers from last year, 18.4% strikeouts, 223 the year before that, uh, again, in the KBO. 249 ERA two years ago with a 315 XFIP, 392 ERA with a 345 XFIP. Um, but the KBO, notoriously, not the major leagues. Dude's 34 I don't really see it here, so maybe a little bit more tempered for the Twins, just given the dip in the uh, home run model, but I still love the pricing. I love the upside here. So Twins bats, yes. Swat has no. Uh, even at 4,000 on DK, I just don't see the path to success. And Pablo and the Orioles are, uh, yes, kind of a tie. Are these the correct pitchers? <laughs> I swear, if these two guys aren't pitching, I'm just going to turn the show off. <laughs> Dan Dunning, three scoobal. All right, we're good. Confirm lineups on both sides. So uh, Dunning going up against the Tigers at 7,100 on DraftKings. I think he can get away with it. 22.7% strikeout rate, 12% walks. Fair amount of ground balls. He's given up way too much power and too much, uh, too, many, too many barrels so far this year in the tiny sample. Stuff Plus doesn't really like him. He's easy enough to avoid if you don't want to take him against a growing and improved Tigers team that does have a lot of quality lefties in the lineup. At 93, I just think it's a misprice on FanDuel, so I just wouldn't go there on FanDuel. Dunning is a capable guy, and he breaks off a good start um, here and there for DFS purposes. 19.4% strikeouts. 370 ERA, 439 XFIP. Good at limiting home runs the last couple of years. So there's a little quality there. The true quality in this game on the mound, though, is Tariq Skubal. 10-6, 10,000. No discount for facing the Rangers. 
it's a Rangers lineup that looks to be in mostly its current version of uh, full form. So no real break for Scooble here. He's terrific, though. 17 and a third over three starts. He's got a 30.8% strikeout rate, a 208 ERA with a 276 XFIP, a .75 whip. He's been terrific at limiting power. He was a major, major breakout candidate this year. Uh, came in last year, 80 and a third innings in 15 starts, 32.9% strikeouts, 4.5% walk rate, uh, and just building off of that. So Tariq Scooble, pretty terrific. Just a brutal matchup here. Don't love the matchup. Very good team on the other side. So it's another decision point. It's another one where you definitely want to have Scooble in your player portfolio. He's in your optimizer builds, and you let it fly. But then when you get down to it, especially if you're building like one lineup, do I want to spend the money to, for Tariq Skubal, who I believe is a fantastic pitcher, could easily win the slate? But do I want to do that against the Rangers when there are other similarly projected, similarly priced, similarly talented pitchers in much, much better matchups? So it just becomes that kind of a decision point. Across 150, across 20, you're definitely including some shares of Tariq Skubal. You can decide on the above below the field, but you definitely want him in there. Bats wise, I'd be more inclined to draw shares of the uh, Tigers against Dane Dunning than the Rangers against Tariq Skubal. Rangers, with all their talent, of course, are a little bit in play, but you're paying a premium for several of these hitters going up against one of the very best strikeout pitchers in the league and a guy who's been really good at limiting power, limiting run scoring in general. So it's a little tricky on the Rangers side. Sammy and Seeger. Adolis Garcia are your priority bats, of course. They're the most expensive guys. You get a nice discount for Wyatt Langford. He's out of the gate okay after tearing up the spring. 266, 333, 313. Just an 86 WRC+, plus, 14% worse than average creating runs. Zero home runs, zero steals. Hasn't been great for DFS purposes, but it's kept the price down. So you can at least use him to average down those other prices. And he's a hell of a player. So, you know, he will round into form in the show at some point. Jonah Heim. Power from both sides of the plate as a catcher. Two home runs, a stolen base on the season. 105 WRC+. plus. Ezekiel Duran, interesting little uh, fill-in player. Plays four positions on FanDuel, just two on DraftKings. 2,900, 2,300 across sites. Had a very good year last year as kind of, kind of in this role. The the 10th man who plays a bunch of different positions. Um, so definitely think you can roll out some cheap Duran. I just don't like the matchup. Evan Carter, another good hitter in this lineup, 45-33. He's very playable in most situations. Out to a slow start this year in terms of the batting average. The on-base has supported him a little bit. He's got two home runs and a stolen base, creating runs 18% better than average and still putting bat on ball well. Davis Wenzel, Leo de kind of afterthoughts in this matchup, for being honest. Tigers lineup, I like all the lefties. Well, I like Riley Green. I like Kerry Carpenter. Um, McKinstry, maybe a little Colt Keith for sure. Their, uh, their rookie uh, prospect, despite a slow start for him. I think you could target those guys. And then Mark Khan, a proven veteran uh, player for a cheap price from the right side who knows how to get on base, help score runs, help create runs for this team. Spencer Torkelson with all his power, I like a lot. So top six or one through four plus six maybe. McKinstry's not awful, but zero ISO, over 32 plate appearances, no home runs, no steals, at 84 WRC+. plus. He's entirely skippable in this spot as well. Uh, second base, third base versus third base shortstop. If I play him anywhere, it would be for 2200 at second base on FanDuel. I don't love him as a third base or shortstop option, um, but I want to get Cole Keith in there, so give and take on that one. Riley Green, a uh, tremendous hitter. Not the greatest start in terms of the average, but on base is right where it needs to be. 200 ISO, 127 WRC+, plus, three homers for him. Three homers for Kana. He's creating runs 41% better than average. 241 ISO, getting on at a 354 clip. Torkelson, no home runs yet. Just 209, 293, 284. Struggling early. But we saw the, um, you know, a full year of struggles after he was the first overall pick. And then a really nice year last year stepping into his shoes um so like torkelson going forward like torkelson in uh, in a vacuum and would play him in uh, in tiger stacks here so schoolsy yes but you're facing a bad a tough matchup dane dunning on DraftKings only is playable not a ton of enthusiasm but could easily be a valuable pitcher at 7100 as an sp2 tigers bats are a yes against dunning Rangers bats are playable, but you're facing an elite, elite pitcher who is very likely to cut them in half today. So don't really like the Rangers. Um, between the two teams, Tigers are the priority. Padres, Brewers. Now we're dealing with Bryce Wilson on the mound. I hope it's still Michael King on the mound for the pods. It looks like it is. 
Uh, so King projects out fairly well, struggling a little bit to start the season, especially versus expectations. People were expecting uh, him to come in and be kind of an ace. He was the primary piece in uh, the, the Soto trade. Um, they also got this guy and a couple of prospects, Drew Thorpe and a couple other things. Um, last year, King was uh, was pretty dynamite, 104 and two-thirds, a lot of bullpen work, nine starts, 29.5% strikeout rate, 275 ERA with a 338 XFIP. That's the guy they thought they were trading for, 33.2% CSW, 11.7% swinging. You can see the dip in swinging strikes, the consequential dip in CSW, the ERA up at 419, 519 XFIP, giving up a lot of power and barrels and uh, too many home runs so far, not striking out. All that many at 21.6, 14.8% walks in the small sample of 19 and a third innings over three starts. A 419 ERA, uh, the 95.64 stuff plus mark is also way down for him. So just, you know, it could be three blips early in the season for a kid who's never started a season as a full-time starter in the, in the show before. So you could be dealing with a little bit of that. Um, there's still a reasonably good projection. For 7,000, given some strikeout upside, I do think he's in play on the DraftKings slate. It's a little bit tough on the FanDuel slate. I think we need to see it a little bit from Kinger here uh, before we go to him on the FanDuel slate. So at 79, I don't love it going up against a middle-of-the-road Brewers team that has enough talent to, uh, to win out here. I'm not really going to rush to stack the Brewers, though. Mid-range home run marks, moderate projections. Lineup still doesn't have uh, Christian Yelich got put on the IL finally yesterday. So we're dealing with Sal Freelich, a light hitter off the top, but a good average and on base run creator uh, type of a player, correlated scoring player. William Contreras out to a great start this season. Four homers, a stolen base, a 250 ISO creating runs at 92% better than average. One of the premium catchers in baseball. He's pricey on FanDuel. He's affordable at 5000 given the talent and the production uh, on the DraftKings slate. Jake Bowers, a little bit of power from the left side, 29-28, pretty cheap. One home run, one steal in his 38 plate appearances. Everything else has been pretty bad. Willie Adames, three home runs. Everything's been, uh, he's been playing over his head. The 18% strikeout rate we talked about yesterday, unrealistic. The triple slash is unrealistic. Um, but he's still cheap, and there is real, very real power there. So if you're going to the Brewers, he's one of the favored bats. Oliver Dunn from the left side, very cheap, out to an okay start. One homer, uh, two stolen bases. 3% better than average for runs. Reese Hoskins, tons of power, 6.44 to lead the team in the home run model. Two rank stolen bases. Jackson Churio, uh, premium prospect, emerging star, whatever you want to call him. Some struggles, some great production, three homers, three steals, big strikeout rate, not enough ISO, not enough WRC plus yet, but we're 63 plate appearances into his career. Blake Perkins at the bottom, kind of a, a productive mix and match type guy. 3,500, 3,000, former fairly high-end prospect, second-round pick, I want to say. I think it was a Yankees pick once upon a time. Uh, 324, 395, 500 to start the season, creating runs 47% better than average. It's moderately playable. Padres against Bryce Wilson now. Uh, pods are drawing uh, about the same marks that they were earlier. Not Actually, no, that's not right because they had Freddie in here. So these home run model, these home run marks have gone up. I was just looking at these guys at the bottom. Uh, Tyler Wade and Matthew Batten, not the right way to judge this team's home run upside. So Machado climbed a little bit. Uh, Tatis climbed a little. Bogey. Uh, Profar hitting third again today with uh, with Cronenworth out of the lineup again. Ha Sung Kim, another big day yesterday. Plays three positions on FanDuel for just 3,100, which is too cheap. 3,900, he's a shortstop only on the DraftKings slate and way too cheap for his talent over there. Uh, 38 stolen bases, 17 home runs last year. He's up to three and four, 113 WRC plus, a 225 ISO. He's been crushing the ball. Um, several doubles uh, in in with the three home runs. So Kim, despite the 225 at the front end of the triple slash, has actually been playing really well. Tatis is a superstar, 5,500, 3,800. He's still a couple bucks less expensive than some of the other superstars. Bogarts with the, slow, with the slow start is very cheap. Shortstop and second base eligibility is nice on FanDuel. Tyler Wade, another very cheap player, 2,300, 2,500. He deserves to be that cheap. That's about where uh, Tyler Wade should be priced. But the quad position eligibility for 2,300, hitting seventh is kind of interesting on FanDuel. He's just a third baseman on DraftKings, and I don't want him at third base. So you can forget him at 2,500 on DK. But he's interesting at 23 on FanDuel. Kyle Gashioka, um, a catcher that we've gone to a number of times when he was in the lineup with the Yankees, has always put bat on ball fairly effectively. 11.1% barrels, 48.3% hard hits, 9.8% barrels, 48.1% hard hits in those last two years. Um, last year, it didn't amount to all that much production. 10 home runs in 260 plate appearances, 10 home runs in 248 the year before that. He's a part-time backup catcher. So he gets he, he's capable of getting his when, he, when he's in the lineup. So 
I wouldn't consider Higgy a total write-off at the bottom of the lineup. He's not a, a wraparound type, though. It's more, if, say you took like a cheap three-man. You went like Kim, Kim Merrill, and, and Higgy, something like that. He can end a stack uh, better than he wraps around. Not a lot of on-base skill or anything like that. But you're looking for the home run for 3,200 if you put Higgy in. So Bryce Wilson is um, pretty much a no. First start of the year, eight and two-thirds pitch so far this year. I guess we got to look at that. Now, of course, why would he come up when I type in Wilson? Longest appearance so far this season was three innings. Struck out one, faced 11 hitters uh, against Cincinnati. That was on the 10th, so that's seven days ago. So he's uh, full rest. You could maybe see him getting out to like four or five if he's pitching well, but I know at 8,700, he's not on the table on DraftKings, and I don't think you're playing him because he's not going to get to the quality start on FanDuel, and more likely these Padres are just going to beat him up a little bit. In previous seasons, uh, last year worked entirely out of the pen. 19.4% strikeouts was all right for the ERA, but the XFIP is more revealing at 472. Year before that, 20 starts, a 15.5% strikeout rate, 552 ERA, 454 XFIP gave up some power. So I think he's targetable. I don't think anything about this small sample is uh, all that realistic. So King is a yes, especially at the cheap price on uh, the DraftKings slate, despite some struggles. I think you can play him at that number. Not our top pitcher, not our top SP2, um, but playable. Padres bats for sure against Wilson. Maybe some Brewers bats uh, among the better players against King as well, given the, given the struggles and some fairly cheap pricing. No real priority in this game, though. Padres bats probably the biggest priority if I had to identify one. Pirates and the Mets. Bryce Wilson against Luis Severino. Or Bailey Falter, rather, <laughs> against Luis Severino. Scared myself there for a second. Falter so far this season, 10.2% strikeouts, a 4-2-0 ERA, a 5-4-1 XFIP, um, giving up uh, plenty of power, premium contact. Stuff Plus doesn't like him at all. Last year, 17.3% strikeouts, a 5.36 ERA, 4.56 XFIP with even more power and premium contact allowed over 80 and two-thirds in 14 starts. Wasn't all that much better the year before that. I think we can target him with some Mets bats. As I said yesterday, these Mets are going to just continue to land in lineups and they're going to continue to be the Mets and be disappointing. Uh, but I think we got to go there. Sal Petta is back in the lineup. Excellent. Uh, so... Mets hitters that I would actually want, Brendan Nimmo, Starlin Marte, Francisco Lindor, despite the extreme struggles to start the year. Petey Alonso, Francisco Alvarez are the priorities. McNeil, slightly playable. Tyrone Taylor, definitely uh, playable against the lefty. Succeeds a lot against lefties, has some power in his bat. Um, is playing fairly well to start the season, too. Harrison Bader is kind of weak at the bottom of the lineup, and Zach Short is kind of weak at the bottom of the lineup. Uh, he's the dead man, and he plays three three positions on FanDuel, though which makes him a little bit interesting if we're stacking this team a lot. Maybe you wrap them back around to the top. Um, Nimmo, fantastic leadoff hitter. Not a great start, but the on-base is supporting him for uh, WRC Plus being above average. Marte, two homers, three steals, above average WRC Plus. The 47 WRC Plus is problematic for Lindor, um, but it's got his prices down a little, especially 2900 on FanDuel. Pretty good price for Francisco Lindor, who just last year was 30-30 uh, plus. Pete Alonso, one of the better home run hitters in all of baseball, a monster home run mark for the day. Alvarez also over the magic number, so is Frankie Lindor. There's a lot to like about that Mets lineup. I don't love Jeff McNeil hitting fifth. Slap hitter needs to get it going in terms of the BABIP. He's playable, but he's not a high-end DFS option. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that, or one through four and then six, seven if I'm putting the positional numbers on it. The Pirates on the other side, fairly cheap. Uh, Severino's pitching fairly well, though. 3.0 ERA, 3.49 XFIP. Looking like Luis Severino in a lot of ways. 25% strikeout rate. He's giving up some premium contact. 40% hard hits, 89 miles an hour of exit velo. Not tragic there. The barrels are under control. The launch angle's been very good at 8.7 degrees. Kept home runs so far in the tiny, tiny sample under 3%. Walking a few too many. 1.40 whip, couple hits. 
not inducing a great swinging strike rate, not a great CSW, a little bit all over the place, but he's gotten it done. He's only 7,300 against the Pirates team that I do think, again, is good, and I do think that this team's going to continue to be frisky throughout most of the year. Jared Triolo appears to be in that lineup twice for some reason. Let me just copy that back in. Um... But I think Severino could find some success here. This this confirmed version of the lineup uh, that Jared Triolo is only in once has a 22.5% strikeout rate for this year. Last year, 24.9. They do draw walks. So if Sevy runs into some walk issues and puts a few too many guys on base and then gets unlucky against somebody like Rowdy Telez for a homer, could get problematic awfully fast. You do see some good home run marks for the Pirates side. So it's kind of a both sides where I think I would play some Pirates and I think I would play some Louis Severino at the very cheap price on DraftKings. 84 on FanDuel, I'm coming around to the idea. It's fairly cheap. It's an effective enough price. It's got a good projection. I like the upside to get through six and book a quality start on a good day. So I think Savvy's on the board on both sides. More enthusiastic about the DraftKings price. Uh, but if we're taking Pirates bats against him, O'Neill Cruz, 11.67% uh, in the home run model. Definitely looks good. Fanatic, your, your website isn't sorting correctly for pitcher projections. If you sort by salary, a couple guys are out of order. Everything looks right on the upload file. Let me see if I re-upload it, if anything changes we'll try and try and get that fixed real quick here let's see <laughs> row count right I'm not seeing that. Check it now. Let me know. Looks like it's sorting okay for me. I just re-uploaded the table, so maybe it was something screwy there. Um, let me know, though, in the chat. Thank you, thank you for pointing that out, Fanatic. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I I, I like to have the website in uh, full working order, so I, I'll always appreciate the note, Fanatic. Don't, uh, don't, don't sweat it at all, buddy. Thank you. Just we've had to fix two, two. If I sounded annoyed, it's because I had to fix those pictures and everything already. So it's just a, just an annoying show, so far. Annoying but fun, you know. You guys get it. Um. All right. So to keep the uh, to keep up pace, Severino, especially on DraftKings, is on the board. Um, more enthusiastic about it on DK, but I would mix him in for sure on FanDuel. That's a pretty fair price, uh, especially with a lot of expensive pitchers. He's one of the better options to get a little cheap on FanDuel. Pirates bats are in play. That's where we were. Uh, O'Neill Cruz, Brian Reynolds, Rowdy Telez, Edward Olivares, and Jack Suwinski are my priorities. That's where most of the power is. Really like Suwinski, uh, 2,800, 3,800 across sites. Out to a bad start. Two home runs and a, and a stolen base, but just a 130 ISO, a 65 WRC+. Plus bad triple slash. Swinski's a premium left-handed power bat. 15.7% barrels, 43.4% hard hits. I like the power upside for a cheap price for Jack Swinski. Olivares out to a good start. Three home runs on the board, 131 WRC+. Plus. Connor Joe's been good, typically uh, you know, better against lefties, but he's effective and he's uh, at a good price hitting third today between the hitters that you actually want. So I wouldn't leave Connor Joe entirely out of stacks. Brian Reynolds, one of the team stars. Rowdy Telez, the uh, second biggest home run mark on the team at 10-1-5. We we know that Rowdy can uh, can get to uh, weak right-handed pitchers, so it depends a little bit on which version of Severino comes out of here. He's been pretty good so far. The stuff has been good, 104.25 in the Stuff Plus ratings. So, you know, not the best overall spot for the Pirates, maybe, but they're cheap. They're showing some decent numbers here, um, so I think we can go to both sides on that one. And then Mets bats are a definite yes against Bailey Falter. See if we got the Royals lineup. I think we did. Yes, we did. Uh, so everything we said about Brady Singer from yesterday's show, if you saw it, still stands. Uh, it was basically that uh, 
Singer's a talented pitcher who is uh, very successful, but for whatever reason, his stuff doesn't just grade out great in terms of uh, just looking at the mechanics of his uh, pitch-by-pitch arsenal. And his stuff never has graded out all that great, but he succeeds at the major league level. So we don't really sweat it, especially against a really bad lineup like the White Sox here. If a guy can succeed in spite of, you know, in defiance of, uh, of ratings like that, then, you know, some of these guys just make that work for whatever reason. Uh, so I think you can go to Singer. It's just the same issue it was yesterday. He's really expensive. 10-5 on FanDuel is insane. Uh, 92 on DraftKings is a lot more playable. So it's another pitcher I greatly prefer on DraftKings. I would, especially because all the other top pitchers are pretty expensive in the same way, I would consider him on FanDuel. The matchup is dynamite. A little bit of wind blowing out, but who cares? Um, There's just a terrible, terrible lineup on the other side. Five home runs combined for this team across the confirmed lineup. So we're taking Singer. Jonathan Cannon, the rookie, uh, making his debut here. Projects out okay, but uh, 5,500, 6,300, I really don't have much faith, and I really want to go to the Royals, who project excellent on the other side. Kansas City ranked out as the top overall projected team. They've got the wind on their side today. Upper mid-range home run marks for basically everybody that we care about in this lineup. Sal back in the lineup is a nice pickup, 9.14 in the home run model. Bobby Witt just under the magic number. MJ and Nelson Velasquez with their uh, premium power upside. Everybody's at a fair price, including Witt, who's very expensive. But getting all these guys in the low threes is dynamite. Adam Frazier, Kyle Isbell, and Hunter Renfro out of the bottom of the lineup. You guys know my favorite out of those three is uh, Hunter Renfro. All three guys have been pretty weak to start the season, well below average for uh, run creation. And at the top of the lineup, Michael Garcia continues to struggle a little bit. A little bit okay in the counting stats department, but not getting on base at all. It's a, Again, I'm going to keep saying it's a weird choice uh, given what he's done so far for that leadoff spot. But they keep rolling him out there, and maybe he'll find some some success. But the core right here, I really like that group. That is a solid, solid five-man group of players. Going up against a pitcher, um, again, who making his debut. We looked at the numbers yesterday. They're in yesterday's article, which is still up on the site if you want them. Um, But suffice to say, we're not playing Jonathan Cannon. We are playing the Royals stack, and we are not playing the White Sox stack. And we can play Brady Singer against them, but he's very high-priced. If you're crazy and you want to go to the White Sox, it's not crazy, right? Crazy is a little strong today. It's not like uh, Jake DeGrom, a healthy Jake DeGrom, is on the mound. You could maybe get away with some cheap White Sox, but it's not a good team. It's not a good stack. If you're going there, this three-man group is really the only three people that I would want, and it's just a straight line. Andrew Vaughn, Gavin Sheets, Aloy Jimenez. Jimenez missed most of the season so far. 12 plate appearances, hasn't done anything yet. Andrew uh, Gavin Sheets has two of their five home runs in this lineup, a 270 ISO, 167. He's actually been pretty good in his 46 plate appearances, just hasn't gotten any help from anybody. Uh, And then Vaughn is a fairly high-end bat, uh, 21 homers last year in 615 plate appearances, 17 the year before in 555. They're expecting more righty power from him. He hasn't really delivered and has been bad to start the season. Dom Fletcher from the left side, if you need to bolt somebody else on there at 2200, fine. You're getting the leadoff, man, but no real quality there. Slap hitter, um kind of past his prime young 30s uh, power hitting shortstop two home runs but not much else out of Paul DeYoung Shoemake Lopez Maldonado it's really really ugly in Chicago right now Royals big big yes Brady Singer a uncomfortable price but he's a yes nothing White Sox to be prioritized bats 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 in this one got both lineups in Mikey Harris hitting second again for the Braves is uh, is nice. While Ozzy Albies is out, we'll probably continue to see that just throughout. Makes a lot of sense to have him in that spot. The Braves are the only team that does it right with their superstar. Guy like Acuna should be leading off, and it's not because he's fast and steals bases. Because he's insanely good at getting on base, and you want to give him as many plate appearances as possible. That was part of the Sabre revolution. Baseball finally realized like, oh, our best hitter should be hitting first or second, not third or fourth. We gain plate appearances. That's why you see Aaron Judge hits second or third these days. Soto hits second. Anyway, uh, Ronald Acuna, Mikey Harris, Austin Riley, Matt Olson, Marcelo Zuna. That's a list of uh, premium power bats. Some of them add a little bit of speed. Acuna still looking for his first home run of the season. Good chance to get it here against JP France. France, 
has been decent at limiting launch angle or limiting barrels so far this year. 5.4% barrels, but a lot of launch. Uh, limiting hard hits and exit velo so far, limiting the home run uh, output so far. But an 8.22 ERA, a 5.64 XFIP, and just a 15.8% strikeout rate. Bad stuff. Um, seems pretty targetable here with the Braves. Gave up more power last year. The numbers were all right last year. ERA was 3.83, 4.81 uh, XFIP, but just a 17.4% strikeout rate. We're not going to JP France. We are targeting with Braves bats. It's the usual sus suspects from the Braves outside of the top five who are all excellent and stackable in really any order. Uh, and the Michael Harris price is a nice asset to have up there, averaging down those other prices with a maybe you know just under a star caliber player but a kid i'm expecting to go you know 2020 20, 2025 20, 25 something like that this year riley's a premium power bat at third olsen premium power at first and marcelo zuna has seven home runs this year and hit 40 last year and is still a little bit cheap four thousand on Fanduel is about right 5300 a couple bucks too cheap still on DraftKings. Orlando Arcia hit 17 home runs last year. Premium shortstop, 368, 413, 544 with a 158 WRC plus to start this season. He is too cheap also. Easy bat to get to. Travis Darno, good backup, uh, good power for a backup catcher. Still very cheap at the bottom of the lineup. Jared Kelnick, power um, from the left side of the plate. is It's in there. It's dormant right now, but you can see it in the premium contact numbers from the last two seasons. Even while he struggled, still made good contact when he connected with the ball. No homers yet this year, but he's out to a 400, 462, 486 start and playing most days. Um, so I like the spot for Jared Kelnick. Luis Guillaume is a fill-in kind of a defense-only play. A um, couple of hits, you know, correlated scoring maybe out of Guillaume. Um, 2,400 shortstop only on DraftKings. That kind of sucks. Three positions on FanDuel at 21. Maybe, maybe, maybe you get away with wrapping them around if you're building like, you know, 50 Brave stacks. He's a low priority bat. Max Reed is a pitcher that I like uh, quite a bit. His greatest success point over time is that he keeps the ball in the yard very effectively in most of his starts. It's not all the time, but most of them. Uh, last year, 2.25% home run rate on a four-degree average launch, 3.8% barrels, 4% barrels, seven-degree average launch the year before that, just 86.2 miles an hour of exit velo, 31.9% hard hits, very good at inducing weak contact, limiting exit velocity, which has its impact on home runs, 1.64% home run rate two years ago. Also good at not walking hitters, not getting himself into trouble, typically fairly low whip, Decent uh, strikeout pitcher, 23 two, two years ago, 25-7 last year. Just 17.9 to start. It's been a weak start for Max this year. 8.74 ERA, 3.80 XFIP. Um, no real strikeouts, walking an uncharacteristically high number. It's not a good get-right spot for Max going up against the Astros here. They pound left-handed pitching almost as much as they pound right-handed pitching, uh, especially Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, who are split up in the lineup by Alex Bregman. Maybe looking to get Bregman going by putting him in between those two hitters today. Um, so it's just a bad matchup for Freed, but he's very effectively priced. 8000 for Max Freed, 7400 It's a little difficult to resist, uh, even with a diminished projection. A lot of other teams, Freed is hovering you know, just under or just above 30 in uh, FanDuel scale, 15-ish on uh, DraftKings. We get shaved down a little bit by Houston's quality. You could play Max Freed. You could get away with it, but it's a very deep pitching slate. I don't know why you would want to try and tackle that outside of just, I'm going to be contrarian for contrarian's sake. Jose Altuve, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, my top three priority bats in this lineup. I also like Jainer Diaz quite a bit, Alex Bregman quite a bit, especially at these diminished prices for his struggles. Out of the gate with a 242, 299, 323, kind of rough, 0.081 ISO sucks, 16% worse than average creating runs, uh, but it's still Alex Bregman in there somewhere. 25 homers last year, 125 WRC+. Plus. I like him to round into form uh, as the season goes on. Diaz off to a great start this season, 286, 338, 443. Creating runs 27% better than average. Handful of homers. Still very cheap, 4,300, 3,000, particularly where you need to play catchers. Jeremy Pena, 4,000. Not a bad price, 2,900, even better price. Very strong start for Pena so far. Mauricio Dubon, multiple position asset. Uh, four positions on FanDuel for 22 is nice. Not a premium bat, but a guy who every now and again delivers and can you know, succeed out of that seven spot as a bolt-on part. Last year in 492 plate appearances, 278, 309, 411. Three percent worse than average creating runs, but hit 10 homers, stole seven bases. For DFS purposes, that's perfectly fine uh, for a fill-in guy who costs in the low twos and plays multiple positions. Jose Abreu back in the lineup after the night off last night. Very weak start to the season. A little bit rough to put Jose into a lineup and Victor Caratini. A uh, little bit of pop from both sides of the plate, 3,000, 2,400. You know, 
think of uh, when Martin Maldonado was in that spot. You get the occasional infrequent power from a cheap, probably unpopular catcher. That said, again, Freed, a little bit difficult to hit home runs against. So if I'm looking for him, I'm looking for him from Alvarez and Tucker and the guys who actually hit him. So the Braves are a yes against JP France. Big, big yes. The Astros... A more tepid yes against Max Freed. Just if you get the, you know, Max Freed being doing his thing and being Max Freed, then it's problematic uh, for the Astros. JP France, big no. Uh, Max Freed is on the board for consideration at cheap pricing, cheaper than he should be, but it's a brutal matchup. Even at 54 and 6, I know that, you know, for a few innings, the Braves were uh, not looking like the Braves, and then they finished the game with like six runs yesterday. Um, Hunter Brown looked pretty good over that start. Hunter Brown is a better pitcher than J.P. France, for one thing. Um, that was him kind of rounding into form a little bit. I really don't see France succeeding in that way. So even if 5,400 is an SP2, you're really throwing a dart. Uh, you're trying to throw a dart, like, you know, through a tiny little ring and then hit the bullseye. It's very, very difficult with J.P. France here. Yankees, Blue Jays. It was a... Uh, Good Kikuchi day again yesterday, huh? As we talked about, that one was a uh, a both sides are. Kikuchi's one of the more frustrating DFS pitchers that we've got because he can be so, so targetable for power, but he's also a decent strikeout pitcher and can work clean innings um, when he's not giving up home runs. So it's just a weird spot, but he's been better than he's been effective more often than not um, over the past two seasons. Today, going up against the struggling Kevin Gaussman. Um, really concerned about the Gaussman thing. Even though he gained some velocity back in the last game, uh, he's been bad to start the season. I just want to look at the... Uh... And last time we had this situation on our hands, the last time he pitched, I was saying I was saying it a little bit differently. I was saying, yeah, we've seen some early season star- struggles. Uh, but this will be the game that decides how we talk about him the next time. And he was bad in that one and came out uh, and and just came out. Doesn't look right. Something is not right. That was a start against Colorado that we were all excited about. All right, this is the get right spot against the worst team in baseball. Uh, he gave up 10 hits in three and two thirds, six earned runs, struck out four, no homers, no walks. And again, the velocity was back a little bit, but that is not a Kevin Gaussman performance against the Rockies. At the, at the Yankees, the start before that, gave up five earned runs, didn't get out of the second inning. An inning and a third, faced 11 hitters, four hits, five earned, six runs total, two homers, two walks. Uh, and then before that, the first start of the year, four and a third against Tampa Bay. Wasn't bad. One earned run, faced 16 hitters, six six strikeouts, no walks. Um, just kind of a short start there. Hasn't gotten out of the fifth inning yet this year. Been a little bit rough going back up against the Yankees. I could see the path to success for sure. It's not completely obscured. And at 7,600, he's at a very, very good value price for being Kevin Gaussman on FanDuel. No real discount on DraftKings. Well, a little bit. The correct version of Kevin Gaussman, this last year's Kevin Gaussman, would probably be like a 10K pitcher or higher nines. 31.1% strikeouts, 316, 322 uh, ERA XFIP last year. So we'll see what we get. Um, but I'm not enthused about it at 9K on DraftKings. I do think you could roll some shares on FanDuel. Even in a limited set of lineups, you might get away with uh, with running run, one out there. There are strikeouts to be had in this Yankees lineup. Um, you know, Stanton at 32.2%. Glaber's not easy to strike out. Rizzo's not the easiest to strike out. Judge, he'll strike out a little bit, 284 last year, but he also draws a ton of walks and destroys the ball. Soto's impossible to strike out. Volpe was aggressive for strikeouts last year, but it really looks like he's improved that quite a bit this season so far. Um, so it's a mixed bag for strikeouts on the other side, assuming this is a version of the lineup we get. Gaussman's good enough to punch out a couple of these guys who have limited strikeouts, though, too. I would take some Yanks. It's not the best spot to be rostering Yankees, but they've got premium options like uh, like Soto, like Judge. 4,200, uh, Judgey slipping below 4,000 is a bargain on the FanDuel slate. Still 6,000 and 6,100 on DraftKings. You can bolt Anthony Volpe on to that for a decent price on both sites, 47.35. Two homers, six deals for Volpe, 83% better than average creating runs over his first 74 plate appearances. Really nice to see the kid get off to a good start. Anthony Rizzo, if he's hitting cleanup um, for those prices, is a great price. If he's hitting fifth, it's the uh, same kind of a bargain at first base. 
still a little, a little bit, um, you know, shaky, still a little bit concerned about Riz. He's got to get his season going. Uh, one home run on the season, pretty bad triple slash 93 WRC plus no power so far, but the price is right. Stanton, tons of power. 4,800, 3,300. Glaber, I like a lot at second base. And then Verdugo, Cabrera, and Austin Wells, you can mix and match your way through. Verdugo, more of a contact-oriented hitter, does have two home runs. Ozzy with the crazy weird start, three home runs on the season, uh, 235 ISO, 150 WRC+, plus, just continues to succeed. I continue to not believe. Uh, Austin Wells, the better of the two uh, Yankees catchers to hit. A little bit of power there from the left side, uh, but hasn't really done anything so far this season. 3,100, 2,400 is pretty cheap. Blue Jays against Marcus Stroman cuts the power a little bit. Stroman pretty good at keeping the ball down. Limits barrels, limits launch angle. Um, not the greatest stuff in the world. Another guy who can succeed without having like amazing stuff just with his ability to keep the ball down. He finds strikeouts from time to time. 24.6% so far this year, 20.7% last year, 20.9% the year before. He'll typically settle into a 1-5, in five, but he'll have his you know 1-4, in 1-3 in three type days. Um, so he can be very good. This Blue Jays team, pretty good at limiting strikeouts, though, so I don't really love targeting them with weak strikeout pitchers. What I think you get here is more just the situation where, I think we talked about it the first time he faced this team, where Stroman maybe has the ability to limit this Toronto team, come out, find a couple of strikeouts, keep them off the scoreboard, or keep it to you know a couple of runs here or there. Last time out, he gave up three hits in six innings, didn't give up any runs, walk one, struck out six. Uh, that was the last time he faced this Toronto team. Last time on the mound was against Miami on the 10th. Lasted five innings in that one, gave up four earned, gave up a home run, struck out seven, but walked four. Uh, kind of a bumpy, uncharacteristic start. So two good, one bad for Stroman so far this year. Capable guy, but at 96-91 against this Blue Jays team without a ton of strikeout upside, seems a little high-priced. Not my favorite play by any means. The Blue Jays are a little difficult to roster at this point. They're very, very top-heavy. David Schneider maybe lengthens the lineup a little bit. We saw Danny Jansen was back in the lineup, but they're with uh, Alejandro Kirk again today. Kevin Kiermaier is like defense only. Dalton Varsho hasn't done anything since arriving in Toronto. It's not entirely true. He was okay last year, just a big dip. 20 home runs, 16 stolen bases. Bad triple slash 86 WRC plus last year, and just terrible so far this year. It's really about these top guys if you wanted to go to Toronto. And again, I really just think it's more a situation where like Stroman's ability to keep the ball down limits their production, but they're not striking out to feed him fantasy points. If you get a few balls through the infield, a couple guys on base, and somebody happens to turn on one, then you're talking. Uh, Justin Turner's out to a great start to the season. One home run, 193 WRC+. plus. Kevin Biggio has been playing very well. You know, maybe, as I've said a couple times, finally turning into the player that he was supposed to, you know, once upon a time supposed to be. 304, 385, 435, creating runs 46% better than average. It's only 52 plate appearances. It is extraordinarily early, but there's nice signs there at least. These three guys are stars. They're all scuffling along. These two guys are at least over the WRC plus mark now. You can see how much WRC plus early in the season can change with just one game, though. This was like 104 and 105 yesterday, and now Vladdy's up to 118. So this early in the season, WRC plus can fluctuate greatly with that one performance. Um, but these three guys are the guys that you want, obviously. And then you bolt Turner into that. Still positional conflict, though, Turner and Vladdy. So maybe it's a three-man with just your favorite three of these four guys. You can stretch it to five by adding uh, Kevin, maybe Davis Schneider. But Schneider's better against lefties, and you're really you're rostering Schneider for a little bit of home run upside. And against Stroman, it's not off the table, but it's, it's more limited. So Kevin Gaussman's a yes at the FanDuel price, even with the struggles. He's not at top of the board. He's not top priority, but I can't rule him out at that price, even against the Yankees. Yankees bats on the other side are a yes, but against Kevin Gaussman, if it's the right Kevin Gaussman, the one we knew last year, um, they're not a great. They're not in a great spot. I could definitely see some success. They got to him last time and pounded him. Um, and then Blue Jays, kind of a limited option. Nats and the Dodgers. It uh, doesn't look like we've got these lineups, at least not on uh, labs. I'm just going to fly through this one. Uh, Jake Irvin, no. Landon Knack, no. <laughs> Nationals, bats, maybe. Maybe you get away with it against Landon Knack. They're cheap, easy enough to get to. Knack is uh, 26 years old, about to be 27 in three months. 
in triple a this year he's got a 402 era a 478 xfip over 15 and two thirds in three starts 27.1 percent strikeouts in 43 innings in triple a last year 10 starts he had a 20.2 percent strikeout rate 9.6 percent walks did have a 293 era but his xfip was 5.75 in triple a pitching as a 25 year old I don't think we're going to land a knack. I do think maybe you can target him with some of these Nationals bats. C.J. Abrams off the top, lefty, um, pretty pretty solid numbers so far to start the season. Excellent uh, breakout year last year. Four home runs, three steals to start, uh, 162 WRC+. Plus. How about Jesse Winker? He had a lefty-lefty home run yesterday. Two homers on the season, two steals, 373, 500 on base so far, over 64 plate appearances. Jesse Winker is back. Crater runs 102% better than average. Lane Thomas for 42 29. Uh, they're probably second best player um, after the, last year's breakout. Two homers, eight steals, off to a slow start this year, but I believe in the talent. Joey, if we're home run hunting against a probably pretty weak righty, I think Joey's in the mix. 8 8 1 in the home run model today, 3,100, 2,900 across sites. Outfield eligibility on FanDuel is nice. Three home runs on the season. Everything else looks like Joey Gallo. Uh, Luis Garcia, mix and match player. Out to a productive start to his season. We know who Luis Garcia is over time. Nick Senzel, if he's in the lineup, is interesting. Very cheap. Um, only eight plate appearances this year. His entire career was derailed by injuries. But he's got talent. When he's in the lineup, I do think he can go there while he's very cheap. Eddie Rosario, bad start to the year. Riley Adams, better against lefties. Uh, didn't play yesterday. We'll see if he's in the lineup today. Jacob Young, um, another guy better against lefties than righties. Not a lot of priority at the bottom of the lineup. But, like, top top six is kind of interesting. It's really more about those four. But if you need bolt-ons, either one of these guys bolts into that. So I do like those four. I'll probably build a four-man with that group if they're in the, if they're in the lineup today on FanDuel. They're just cheap. They're, they're frisky. Dodgers against Jake Irvin. Fire away. A couple of guys over the magic number. Another handful of guys just below the magic number. Another two guys above average. James Outman should go 20-20 this year. Andy Pajes, found out it is Pajes. Glad I wasn't sitting here saying, Andy Pages is the guy that you want. Uh, he is on the FanDuel slate today at the dead minimum. That's very nice to see. Looks like he had a hit yesterday. He scored a run. Uh, that was his major league debut. But as we looked at, premium power bat through the minor leagues. Um, fairly high end prospect for them. So if Pajes is in the lineup again, I like him, especially at the very, very low prices on either side. At worst, he helps you average down the prices of everybody else. You'd love to get him like up in this territory, but they're not bumping any of those guys out of the middle of the lineup. These are all. These guys are all. Well, these three guys are would be the three best players on a lot of other teams in the league, and James Outman is a step behind those guys as a growing young player. Uh, these guys are superstars and would be superstars on any team in baseball. You stack all three of them if you can. You stack two out of three of them in uh, any given situation, especially when they're facing Jake Irvin, who's out to a 4-2-4 ERA, a 3-6-3 XFIP, 21% strikeouts, a uh, little bit gettable for power. Last year, Irvin, he was okay, 18.7% strikeouts, but a 4-6-1 ERA, a 5-1-4 XFIP, 10.2% walks is problematic, too much power. It is a guy that you can absolutely target with the Dodgers, and they stack pretty much top to bottom. Gavin Lux, uh, former top, top prospect, just derailed by injuries over the last few years. Not a great start for him over 55, but they're going to keep rolling him out there and give him his shot. Uh, he's very cheap, too, from the left side of the plate. So it's a, it's a nine-man lineup for the Dodgers. So Nationals bats, yes, but like, you know, you know yes is like a low-owned discount play against a weak pitcher. Dodgers bats, gigantic yes against Jake Irvin. Don't play either pitcher. Three games to go. 12-14. I know I'm totally ignoring chat today, guys, but we're trying to get through this one. All right, let's see what Devin's got to say. Uh, Devin uh, wouldn't be shocked if the Yanks are like 5% and go off. Toronto bullpen's been horrible this year, too. Yeah, not a bad call there. Devin says uh, made one of the, one of those make a five man Yankee stack and play Gaussman and a few elsewhere. Yeah, that, that's probably the way I would approach it, uh, especially at that cheap price on FanDuel. I just want to I want to be ahead of the turn for Kevin Gaussman when it comes. And now that they've dropped his price that far, it just makes sense. So could totally fail, but yeah. For FanDuel, it has Miller at the top at ten two, then it's Singer at ten five. But was, were you sorted by FanDuel or were you sorted by? DK. Oh yeah, that's that's weird. You're right. Those aren't sorting now. That's a that's an effect of uh, that's something to do with the table press site. It's but you're right. I was looking at the DraftKings column and that's sorted correctly. 
Um, something in that FanDuel column it doesn't like. You know what it might be is the NA for Albert Suarez. It might be that impacting the way that that sorts. That is weird, though. It's probably it's probably that NA thing. I'll see if that's something I can fix in there. I'm not sure. It might just be a function of how table press works on the site. <laughs> Lazy mofos. If I lose to Freed, I deserve to lose that day. <laughs> Ozuna, Trout, etc. has more home runs than the entire Chicago White Sox lineup. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So uh, Stephen Matz against the Athletics. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really believe 12.9% strikeouts to start the year, but not really walking anybody. A 180 ERA. Stuff plus doesn't like him. Hasn't given up any home runs in his three starts and 15 innings. Hasn't really struck out many at 12.9%. Just 2% barrels, though. Limiting premium contact. Facing the Oakland A's. 6,700, 7,300. A believable enough projection. Getting some bonus projection there, uh, certainly from the matchup. Last year for Matt's 21.8% strikeouts in, in 17 starts, 105 innings. Was good at limiting barrels. Launch angle was all right. Premium contact was okay. 3.86 ERA, 3.96 XFIP. He's not without talent. 10.7% swinging strikes, 28.1% CSW. The year before was good for strikeouts in a smaller sample. 10 starts, 48 innings, 26.1% strikeouts, 12.1% swinging, 30.4% CSW. Once upon a time, Stephen Matz was a premium prospect. He's been up and down throughout his career. He's been hurt a lot. Um, he's very, very cheap against the A's here, though. I have problems saying no to the pricing. I think, uh, especially at 67 on uh, as an SP2 on DraftKings, you can probably get away with it. 73 on FanDuel, I think you can get away with it. Building out 20 lineups, he's probably in a couple of them uh, at 7,300. In 158 lineups, I can tell you for sure he'd be in a solid handful of them uh, just at that price with this matchup. Could absolutely fail. Might go out, not strike anybody out, give up two home runs to Shea Langoliers, We'll see if we get Esther Ruiz in the lineup today with this goddamn Oakland team. Um, I would take some, if I roster Steven Matz in any big way, I would definitely take some uh, hedge position with some of those cheap A's bats. Not a big hedge position, but I would grab some Zach Geloff, some Langoliers, some Esther if he's in the lineup. Maybe Abraham Toro out of the top end of the lineup. The lefty's probably not going to be in here against Matz. Uh, guys like Seth Brown, Ryan Noda, uh, J.J. Bladé. But a couple of these guys are somewhat interesting. It does, if they if they do go like straight platoon like this, though, it kind of does weaken their lineup. Like several of those lefties are some of their better options. So justification for the spot for Steven Matz, maybe? Paul Blackburn is <laughs> ridiculously priced on FanDuel at 9,800 somehow. I don't get that. I don't dislike Paul Blackburn. Like in a vacuum, he hasn't given up any runs yet this year for one thing in three starts, 19 and a third. Um, just a 15.5% strikeout rate though. Hasn't given up any power. He's been very good at limiting power, limiting premium contact. He's finding some swinging strikes, but not striking anybody out over 103 and two thirds last year, 22.4% strikeouts, 443 ARA was good at limiting power last year. Decent at limiting power the year before that 428 ERA, 389 XFIP that year, sub 20% strikeout rate. I just don't get the price at 7,600 on, on DraftKings. If you want to play Paul Blackburn against the Cardinals, go for it. We've seen the Cardinals completely fall on their face time and time again. Um, so I have no issue with it. On FanDuel at 9,800, I have a big issue with playing Paul Blackburn. That doesn't make sense price-wise. Um, doesn't project out great, but doesn't project out terribly for the money on DraftKings. I would probably still rather grab the Cardinals' bats. I'm a sucker for the Cardinals. Uh, quadruple position eligibility on Brendan Donovan off the top for a fair price is interesting. He's out to a good start. Two home runs, a 190 ISO, 123 WRC+. Plus. Goldschmidt, Arenado, kind of weak starts. 55 WRC+, plus for Goldie, 98 WRC+, plus for Arenado. They both have one home run. Lars Newport in the lineup, uh, returning to the team from the left side of the plate. Good mid-range power, a little bit of speed. 43-33 across sites. 21 plate appearances, he's got a home run on the board. We don't worry about the triple slash yet. 134 WRC+, plus, 267 ISO in the tiny, tiny sample. Wilson Contreras, high-end catcher for 4,500, 3,000. I like get him higher up in the lineup, um, but this is a fine spot hitting fifth. Nolan Gorman, a lot of power at second base for 44, 28. All these guys just kind of drop into the mid-range price-wise on DraftKings. I know everybody's in red because that's because it's comparing to these low, low prices for the uh, entire athletics team. Uh, but nobody on the Cardinals is priced over even 5,000 on DraftKings today. So they're very effectively discounted going up against Paul Blackburn. 
not the greatest hitters park in the world, but a gettable pitcher. With all these good players at under 5,000, the Cards are an interesting value team today. Only Newt Bar and Donovan over 3,000, or excuse me, and uh, Contreras right at it. So you're getting Goldschmidt, Arenado under 3,000 on FanDuel, Gorman under 3,000 on FanDuel. I even like the bottom with Mason Wynn and Jordan Walker. Wins out to a very strong start to the season. Jordan Walker was effective all the last year. We won't write him off after 56 plate appearances this year. Only Victor Scott is completely awful at the bottom of the lineup. Can't believe I was trying to sell that guy. Can't steal bases if you can't get on base, and he's at a 145 on base percentage. And all he really does is steal bases. So uh, the cards are on the board, especially with those value prices. I like that. Paul Blackburn on the other side is on the board at 7,600, but only on DraftKings. 9,800, I wouldn't play Paul Blackburn on FanDuel. Steven Matz at 67 and at 7,300 on FanDuel is on the board going up uh, You know, for the matchup, for the quality over time. Um, if you don't like it, don't play it. <laughs> it's not comfortable. I'll say that much. Um, definitely not the most reliable starter in the world, but a very good matchup and very good pricing. And if I did that, I would probably grab some uh, A stacks again around some of those uh, righties. The The primary guys I want are Geloff and Langoliers in this spot. It's really about those two guys and then Estero if he's in there. So maybe it's a three-man for pretty cheap. And Langoliers, keep in mind, is wildly inconsistent. He's just got really good premium contact against a lefty who might serve one up to him. So If Ruiz starts, will Oakland management require they pinch hit for him after the seventh inning? If Ruiz starts, Oakland management might have snipers on the roof trying to take him out as he rounds first base on a double. Um, the way they're treating their players and their fans this year is just uh, abysmal. I, I wouldn't speculate about it. Um, he's been tearing the cover off the ball in AAA. If he's in the lineup, I would expect a full game. Um, there are other guys that I think they would be looking to pinch hit for uh, situationally. Like I said, a lot of their better hitters are left-handed. So if they get into a situation uh, where they get a righty reliever and let's say, oh, I don't know, uh, Daryl Hernandez or Max Schumann is coming up, you might see like Ryan Noda pop in there. You might see Seth Brown pop in for one of those guys. I don't think it would be Estere just because of what he does. Good question though. Two games to go. Uh, Jordan Wicks, Brandon Fate, uh, Fate 23% strikeout rate, 6480 RA, but you can see the quality in the 363 XFIP. It's a little bit of bad luck so far this year. 4.1% walk rate, 15.5% swinging, 31.6% CSW. Just didn't project out great against this Cubbies team. It's weird because he's you know not the biggest sample in the world, and he struggled badly at the start of last year. So there's some bad numbers in the mix for him. It's bringing the projection down a little bit. Uh, out of all like the medium-grade pitchers for the 7,000 prices, He's the one I could actually see putting up the big start uh, for that money and, you know, quote unquote surprising. It's just that I do have a healthy respect for this Cubbies team on the other side. We just saw this this game on both sides go off last night. Cubbies get on base a lot. They score a lot of runs. They've got respectable enough power. So I do like the pitcher. I would play him at these prices. I think he's deeply discounted for his talent. And I don't think he's been as far off the mark as those prices would indicate. Again, with the swinging strikes of CSW, the strikeouts overall are down a bit from what he was at the end of last year. Finished 22.3. The end of last year was um, in like the high 20s. Um, but I don't think the ERA is necessarily in indicative of what he's done so far. He's given up a little bit of, uh, of home run power. But I think you can get away with him. 1224 we gotta hustle through this because i gotta get those updates in uh, and build some lineups um so jordan wicks on the other side out to a great start 12 and two-thirds 29.2 percent .2 strikeout rate a 5680 ra but a 393 xfip hasn't given up any home runs yet 15.1 percent swinging strikes it's just another spot where diamondbacks really tough team also tough against lefties as i'm sure devin's about to say in the chat so i kind of just default to the lineups here especially with the cubby or with the uh d-backs against wicks and i don't know that i would go to wicks he's really effectively priced but the projection's pretty limited by uh by the diamondbacks quality and they don't strike out all that much either there's a couple guys who strike out aggressively but there's a lot of guys who really limit strikeouts so maybe not the right spot for wicks i think we're going uh diamondbacks offense maybe a little bit of uh of brandon fate maybe a little bit of cubbies cubs bats if you're going there ian Happ off the top you can see the home run marks look pretty solid for one thing Hap. 
Cody and Chris Morrell all over the magic number. Dansby just below it in a premium power bat at short. Michael Bush tearing the cover off the ball so far this season. Six home runs, 304, 394, 679. Another guy with uh, more home runs than the team across town in Chicago. 4,400, 3,300, still pretty effectively priced, particularly on DraftKings. Multiple first baseman kind of sucks. Uh, I don't know that we get Garrett Cooper in there. We'll see. More of a pl platoon bat. 4,200, 2,300 for him. Nico, a little bit of speed, a little bit of on-base skill, getting on at a 403 clip. Uh, no stolen bases yet. Weird stolen base totals for the Cubbies. They usually run a little bit more than this. Mike Talkman, good on base skills. Young Gomes, if he's in the lineup, a uh, little bit of sneaky pop as a catcher. But really, the priorities are like there, one through five. Mix and match guys at the bottom of the lineup. Um, yeah, I was I was going to throw something in there about like might be a both sides stay away spot. Woo! NBA issues lifetime ban to Jonte Porter for violating gambling rules. That's what you get, Jonte. So stupid. Give up millions of dollars so his friends can win thousands on parlays. Anyway, uh, Diamondbacks lineup, if you're going there, they are facing a, a guy who's been pretty decent for strikeouts, but he's walking too many so far. So I think you can get away with some Diamondbacks. Ketel Marte, Corbin Carroll, Lotus Gudiel, Christian Walker is a dynamite four-man just directly off the top. Everybody's, call it 100 to 200 too cheap on DraftKings. They should be higher fives. Everybody's, uh, you know, 100 bucks too cheap on FanDuel. Each of those guys could be could stand to be slightly higher priced. They're an excellent group of players. There's speed, there's power, there's low strikeout rates for most of those guys. Christian Walker is at 26.5 this year, but he was at 19.2 last year. Good low strikeout rate the year before that. Every one of those guys knows how to draw a walk. You can see some double-digit walk rates. Cattell Marte just under double digits, but was at 10.9% last year. Giannio Suarez as a power bat following those guys from the right side. Solid third base option at 43-29. A little bit of a discount. He's got two home runs on the season in 88 WRC+. plus Multi-seasons with 30-plus home runs in his career. Gabriel Moreno didn't play yesterday. Uh, scratch from the lineup. We'll see if he plays today. But a premium catcher, 4,2500 effectively priced. Not the greatest start. 244, 358, 356, 99 WRC+. Plus. He'll come around. He'll be fine. Randall Gritchick, right-handed power in a you know low-end kind of a way. Blaze Alexander. Kind of an interesting young kid. 300, 364, 475 to start. 131 WRC plus. Two homers and a stolen base. Um, good production in the minors for on base percentage for stolen bases. A little bit of um, mid range power. So, kind of an interesting bat for very cheap at shortstop down there. Kevin Newman, kind of an afterthought if he plays. Every time Carroll and Alexander get on base, seems as if they have, as if they have the auto green light to steal. Wish John Lester was on the bump today for Chicago. <laughs> that would be a dynamite combination, Monty. I like that, um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of stolen base upside for this uh, for this group of players, and I, I agree, Blaze Alexander. I think he's going to rack up some stolen bases if he continues to get on. Over forty four plate appearances so far, solid three sixty four on base, and he was a good uh, on base option in throughout his minor league career. So, kind of a compelling player. Cubbies bats, yes. Diamondbacks bats, yes. More enthusiasm for the Diamondbacks bats, and a little bit maybe just because he's so discounted of Brandon Fatten, he's not, again, we're not far off the mark, even with some struggles. A lot of this is okay. So I, I like him to potentially rebound. Maybe it's not today. Maybe it's the next start. I don't know who he faces next, um, but he's right there. Last game up. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Good pitching matchup to talk about first, though. Uh, Bryce Miller, one of the top projected pitchers on the entire slate. He is too cheap at 8900 on on DraftKings. That's an SP1 that we're talking about here. Um, so you can get a discount on an SP1 on DK. He's correctly priced at 10-2, and that's a little bit cheaper than a couple of the other guys on the slate. So very nice asset to have. 23.6% strikeouts, 8.3% walks so far this year. A 196 ERA, a 399 XFIP under the covers. Last year, 22.2% strikeouts as a rookie, 432 ERA, 431 XFIP. Was in that Mariners vein of uh, not walking too many guys. 4.8% walk rate is excellent for a rookie, especially when you find some strikeouts. Good swinging strike rate. This year, an excellent swinging strike rate early. 16% swinging, 33.1% CSW is dynamite. Honestly, he's not putting guys away. The strikeout rate should be higher with these results. Uh, you can see Stuff Plus likes him. His four-seamer grades out as one of the best pitches in baseball. Gets a ton of swing and miss on the four-seamer. Very, very good young pitcher. 
10 2, happy to pay it on FanDuel. 89 would be excited to pay it on DraftKings. Andrew Abbott on the other side, not off to a great start. 15.9% strikeouts. 260 ERA is great. 4.96 XFIP, maybe a little bit more honest. Last year, 387 ERA, a 456 XFIP. Was good for strikeouts at 26.1%. Gave up a little bit of power. We saw him get dinged a few times, but we also saw a few decent starts out of him. Walked too many, put too many guys on base, and then led to some power was where the, uh, the big games came from. But could succeed here. Very, very high strikeout teams on both sides. So I could see a rebound for Andrew Abbott's strikeout stuff. 8,200, he projected out fairly high based on all the strikeouts in the other lineup. So I didn't put my thumb on the scale there, um, given last year's talent, given last year's strikeout numbers. Just early season blips. I think we can go to him. Um, 8,200, he's also entirely skippable at that price. So he's playable but skippable, right? <laughs> that makes sense. Um but against a team with a current year 30.2% strikeout rate for the projected version of the lineup, the the uh, last year's strikeout rate was 23.8, probably a little bit more realistic. But there are just a ton of strikeouts, and these Mariners are struggling badly. The average batting average now sits at 214. It's come up a little bit. The average on base, 296. Average ISO, all of this is small sample. Average ISO, 119. Average WRC+, plus 90. So on the average, they're 10% worse than average creating runs across the entire projected lineup. Uh, that said, you know, there is more talent in this lineup than they've been. We're still under, well under 100 plate appearances for any of these guys. And there are bats that are decent in here. I just don't think they add up to a great team, um, especially not with all those strikeouts. Crawford not getting on base enough ahead of Julio. Julio not doing anything behind J.P. Crawford. Ty France, one of the only guys who's hitting the ball a little bit this year. Uh, 316 on base, but a 283 average, 340 slug. Unfortunately, doesn't really have any power. Needs a little help from his friends, and he's not getting it. Um, this group of hitters is where the power lies with this team, outside of Julio, obviously. That's an okay four-man in terms of maybe home run hunting, but you're not really getting much on base. You're getting a lot of swing and miss out of that group. You're not getting a ton of base hits out of that group. So it's kind of an all-or-nothing group to stack, which is why you probably want to put a Crawford... Uh, certainly a Julio, he's in a different category, or a Ty France into this group and maybe leave one of those guys out. It's easy enough to do with two catchers on board on DraftKings. More of a decision on FanDuel, but if you're going to France as that uh, next man in, it's easier to leave one of the catchers out because you can't play all three of those guys together if they're in the lineup. A lot of power from both catchers. I like both guys in a vacuum, but they're both off to pretty terrible starts. Bottom of the lineup, uh, Jonathan Class finally on the FanDuel slate at 2,000. Uh, 250 average so he's got uh, what four hits over his uh, first eight plate appearances or no excuse me two hits over his first plate eight plate appearances uh two rbis so far another guy who is a speed burner and uh, had a pretty good ops in his minor league career on base plus slugging so interested to see what he does at this level a frisky enough bat if he's in the lineup at the dead min 2200 on DraftKings. if you're compelled to stack this team against andrew abbott if you're compelled to stack the reds for some reason against bryce miller he, he could go pop i mean it's uh, it's not inconceivable and they've got a very good lineup with a little bit of power in it but a ton of strikeouts there for miller too a bunch of 30 plus guys so far this year 26.2 collectively for this projected lineup if i'm going there it's will benson christian encarnacion strand spencer steer jake fraley ellie de la cruz as the um the primaries the the high high value targets in that lineup and then a little bit of struggling jonathan india is a bolt-on out of the out of the leadoff spot for cheap prices at second base is fine Jammer Candelario, didn't he get hurt? Didn't he come out of the lineup? Probably not playing today. I feel like I, I saw that he got hurt and was out of the lineup yesterday. He scratched, right? Was that what I'm thinking of? Either way, if Jammer's in the lineup, uh, he's out to a bad start, but he's a guy who's hit for power from both sides of the plate over time. So you can play him. You can stick him into a lineup or two. Nick Martini, three home runs, uh, kind of surprising start to his season. 37 plate appearances. He's got a 343 ISO, a 136 WRC+. plus. Could definitely play cheap spoiler against Bryce Miller here. But the priorities are two, three, four, five, and six. Um, Benson, good power, good speed, good run creation. Encarnacion Strand, tons of power, great position in the lineup, and he's cheap for the home run upside. Spencer Steer, great start, three steals, three home runs, 176 WRC+, 283 ISO, great triple slash. Fraley, home run, five steals, 187 WRC+. Plus. Very good triple slash over 43 plate appearances. Ellie, too many strikeouts, everything else is pretty much great. Um, and just one of the most exciting players to possibly roster for DFS purposes. Top to bottom, inside and out, that's the show. 
Um, we're going to skip the summary just because I've got to get everything updated here and we've only got a little bit of time before lock. But just to show you the board one last time, uh, Bryce Wilson obviously not at the top. That's a result of uh, reinserting these guys. So that's your correctly sorted uh, board by DraftKings projections. Cut line is probably right there. It's right there on both sites because I would use Brandon Fat in that spot at uh, on, at the FanDuel price. You've got a realistic value bin option there. I wouldn't necessarily go here for value plays, and I don't like any of these options for value. But Steven Matz is totally playable at 6,700. If you don't like that, you can definitely get to some Michael King at 7,000 for a little slight bit more. Um, Dunning, Fat, even Blackburn is moderately playable on the DraftKings slate. He's just crazy mispriced on FanDuel. I guess we are doing the summary. <laughs> Pablo Lopez is too cheap. Tariq Skubal is excellent. Bryce Miller is excellent. Andrew Abbott um, projects highly against a very high strikeout team for a good price. It's interesting. Severino's pitching well. He's still very cheap. I can see the upside. Michael King, not pitching well. Had a great year last year. I can see the upside. Brady Singer, excellent upside um, for a pretty talented pitcher. He's just very expensive, but he's going up against one of the worst lineups in baseball. Kevin Gaussman is way too cheap on FanDuel. You can get away with it, um, but it's a very good Yankees lineup, and he is struggling badly. At 9,000 on DK, he's a little bit rough. Home run board. That is your home run board for the day. Petey Alonzo all the way at the top yet again. Chris Morrell. A lot of cubbies probably in here. In the, we saw several of them over the magic number against Fat, but uh, not not total faith in that one. I, I like that pitcher. I think he's very good. Dodgers are obvious. A um, little bit from the Pirates as a potentially sneaky stack back the other way against Seve for sure. Still like Minnesota for power. Buxton still over the magic number. I had Jeffers as the uh, home run pick of the day. He certainly dipped from where he had been, but I'm going to stick with it. 7.53, still not bad, and not a lot of history on that pitcher who uh, got subbed into that spot. That is it, guys. Good luck out there. Somebody go win something. We'll be back for more tomorrow. Let me go update the site. I'll see you.